This is part 17 of our series of tutorials for building our target uh, game. And we're approaching the end where we um, went already over three over uh, three of the four scripts, which are first and foremost, my game manager attached to this empty game object, um, the explode when hit, which is attached to the bullet. Uh, sorry, to the target, the trigger on key, which is attached to the bullet, to the missile. And the only one we have left is the script catch miss script, which is, to remind you, if we go to our folder prefabs, it is attached to the prefab called wall, because the wall is the one that catches all the missed missiles. So here it is right now, the script, it's an empty shell. Let me open it, right click, or just uh, drop the menu and it launches um, Visual Studio and opens the script, which right now should be totally like a shell of an empty script. And as we did in the previous three, highlighting all of it, deleting all of it, finding our code. Here it is, target code, and the code for the catch me script is here. I'm opening it in whatever text editor it wants to open with. By the way, I recommend not doing this with Microsoft Word because from my experience, Word tends to add unwanted characters. I would use the simplest text editor. It could be Notepad++, uh, it could be just Notepad, whatever simplest text editor so the text transfers you know, as is. Um, select all and copy just like we did with the other scripts and paste usually puts you okay there's no empty line here good so that should take your script even with all the empty lines here to about line 61 let's save and see what this does as usual i'm never gonna get tired saying that before i even go over the script it's name catch me script catch miss script has to perfectly match the name of the class in it. Uh, so let's see what's there. Uh, in this script, there are two um, public variables, which means there will be two, as soon as we go back to Unity, two fields to fill up, like, you know, two actors to cast. One of them is the audio source called Mist Sound which defines the audio source that has the miss sound in it. And you'll see why, because we would want to control this sound a little bit. Um, and the other one is a public transform called missed impact uh, prefab. It defines which prefab will be the hole in the wall, the one that's going to be instantiated once, um, once we hit. Uh, so if we go back, this script is not going to work until we go to the wall, find the script. Here it is, catch me script, and it's asking who's going to be the missed sound. The missed sound belongs to the wall. So I'm gonna drag the wall in. It's the sound attached to the wall. And the missed impact prefab is the missed impact prefab. They're all sitting in the prefab. So it knows where to get them from. Wait a second, I lost it. Where's my wall? And here it is. So it knows that the sound attached to the wall is the sound that's going to be controlled when we, you know, miss and hit the wall. And the free prefab that's going to be instantiated is going to be the one called Miss Impact. Again, this opens the door for later on saying, well, maybe I don't want it to look like a hole in the wall. Maybe I want it to look like an X, you know, and so on. All I will have to do is replace this actor with another actor. And the same things I'm telling this object to do will be done to whatever object I fill up in this uh, field. So going back to the script, let's see what it does. It's not a long script. It's about 50, 60 lines. Um, notice again that in this script, we're not using start and we're not using update. So I could even delete those lines. But I, you know, my habit is to leave them there just in case I will need them in the future. Again, just like the target, it's all about detecting collision. Look, 
a function. Void just means a function that re doesn't return a value, but just does its job. Um, on collision, enter. When the collision happens and the object that will uh, that symbolizes the collision, I gave it the name, my bullet collision, because the bullet collides with the wall. The first thing we're checking is, if my bullet collision, the object that collided with the wall, has the tag bullet, that makes sense? Um, to remind you, the bullet container has the tag bullet. This is how it's able to tell that it's a bullet, even though there's going to be, uh, you know, 10 clones of it, um, to tell that they're all clones of the same thing. One of the ways to do it is by giving it the tag bullet. We covered that about five or six uh, tutorials ago, giving those tags. Um, back to the script. So if it does match, first of all, destroy my bullet collision, game object. The object that collided, destroy. So destroy the bullet. Then we need to figure out where it hit. Where did it hit the wall? So we declare a local variable with the kind contact point, with the name contact, and we say it's my bullet collision, contact zero. Um, if the bullet hits several parts of the wall, the first con point of contact is called contact zero because it's an array. So find the coordinates of the first point of contact because we want the hole in the wall to be where it hit. Of contact. Um, then we extract for that the position by saying, okay, once we find out the position, let's bring it into a vector three. Remember vector three, we'll break it into three numbers, X, Y, and Z. And once we know the X, Y, and Z of the contact point, so the contact point is just a, a a contact point. But to make it a format that we can control, we're taking its value and putting it into a vector three called pause for position. Then we're going to say, okay, then instantiate a miss impact prefab, which is that hole in the wall at the position that we just found out. And this is something we already saw that Quaternion Identity just means that it's going to be at the same rotation. So this is, you know, it's three parameters. What to instantiate, at what position, at what rotation. It's the rotation of its parent, which is the wall. So it's going to be always um, aligned with the rotation of the wall. So it's going to be perfectly like the poster is going to be perfectly stuck to the wall. Uh, and again, the uh, quaternion identity is the rotation of this object, the wall. So the hole will be perfectly stuck to the wall like a poster. Then comes something that I attached because I thought something like this. If I have just one sound for every time I miss, um, it's going to look, it's going to sound a little boring and repetitive. One of the things about sound is that, you know, every time you hit the wall in reality, it makes a slightly different sound. So what I did is to randomize the pitch of the sound. The pitch of the sound is its speed. And of course, uh, the default speed is one. So 0 0.4 means play it slower and 0 0.6 makes it, you know, a little more than time and a half faster. Missed sound, which we defined before, dot pitch, random range of 0 0.1 to 1.6. Every time it plays that sound, it'll play it a little faster, a little slower, giving the illusion that it's different sounds. So it's kind of cheating. Instead of building an array of seven different sounds, I'm just using the same sound every time in slightly different pitch, and that'll make it sound, you know, different. Um, and of course, I'm reporting if there's a hit, I'm reporting to application data that it's time to make a new bullet because I just destroyed the previous one. Uh, by hitting the wall. And that's pretty much it. That's it. If we commented, this would be the end of if. This would be the end of the function. 
of the collision enter and collision and this is the end of the class so at this point it's time to cross our fingers and if i didn't forget anything that would be a good time to test our game it would react to both uh hitting a target or missing uh let me actually miss a few in a row just so you can hear the sound changing and actually let me see if i can even um go to the wall front and to the sound and here's the pitch and maybe if we fix our eyes on this we can see this going up and down in pitch every time i miss okay randomly it shows half the speed and the next time i miss 0.7 and the next time i miss 0.8 and if I hit, it doesn't play that sound at all. It plays the regular explosion. And the next time I miss, a very, you know, again, seven. Uh, let's see if it'll do a higher one. And six. It just keeps picking random numbers between the two ranges that I gave it. Uh, I'm running out of bullets, and right now I hit only one out of eight. See, right now, there was a very short sound because it picked a high uh, pitch. And now it's one out of nine. And I was very bad. It was one out of ten. And it turned off the lights. Notice, by the way, how the last one, you can barely see it, is stuck to the sidewall. And it took on its uh, rotation because of that quarter Indian, um identity it's the identity of that wall because our all the walls are clones of the same um prefab and they all have the same uh sound but they don't all have the same rotation so now that i reach 10 out of 10 uh the game manager has indicated that it's you know that i ran out of bullets and showed the replay button when i click the replay button it simply loaded the scene again and everything is zeroed and so on except one thing the high score is 10% because I, you know, in the previous round, I hit um, only one out of 10. By the way, of course, the exit button right now is not going to work because it's not a compiled executable yet. So it does not exit uh, Unity, but once it is built as, a, um, as an app, um, it will quit it. And that's going to be uh, the next part of our tutorial is uh, uh, compiling, is building.